I just see my mindset in, in the field of nursing and coaching, and it's different than everybody else. Like people at work can tell I was a wrestler. We can endure anything and adapt and pivot and change. Wrestling gave us that ability. I would say nothing in life has impacted me more than the things wrestling has taught me in terms of self-reflection, resilience. Toughness. Some guys have it, some guys don't. Adversity, 100%. How to pick myself up and be a man after I failed. And everything that has shaped my life and where I'm at today would not be there without the values and basically the the lessons I've learned through the sport of wrestling. For me, wrestling saved my life because it, it allowed me to focus and channel my energy. We're fortunate if you wrestled because if you wrestled, natural talent helps, but it's, it's 5% of the ingredient. It pales in comparison to heart and technique and effort. It humbled me, taught me humility. Nothing can hit, humble you more than wrestling. I think it's the learning to adapt, right? You learn, you learn how to adapt, you learn how to solve problems. You know, if I look back at my time, I spent wrestling. If it gave me one thing more than anything else, it's mental toughness. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Wrestling Change My Life podcast. This is your host, Ryan Warner. As you can tell, I'm recording this intro from my iPhone in a Starbucks bathroom. Alas, let's get started with today's episode. It's with Jan Rosenberg, a 2016 Division III All-American for Coe College, one of my favorite Division III programs. Today, Jan is a nurse as well as an assistant coach at Coe. And in this episode, we talk about a lot of things, one of which is Jan's journey from the Rutgers room where he was a D1 recruit to Division III. Hope you enjoy it. As always, fan of the week goes to... John Wineland from Memphis, Tennessee, a proud new owner of some Wrestling Changed My Life merchandise. Thank you so much for the support, John. We appreciate it. As always, Wrestling Changed My Life is proudly presented by Spartan Combat. Some of the Spartan athletes, Kyle Dake and Yanni D, will be competing at the World Championships this weekend. Show them their support as well as how much you appreciate Spartan Combat's support of this podcast by going to spartancombat.com and placing your custom team apparel order for this upcoming season. Go to SpartanCombat.com. And that's it, folks. Let's give it up for this interview with Jan Rosenberg. Jan Rosenberg, welcome to the podcast, brother. Thanks, man. It's an honor to be here. I'm a big fan, so really appreciate you having me on. No problem, man. It's great to have you. I know we've been looking to get this conversation scheduled for a while, so it's awesome to have you and Man, you've had a had a busy summer. You spent some time out at the OTC. I believe you went to Fargo. Um, and yeah, so tell us a little bit about yourself, and then we'll get into the uh, get into the summer you had. Where are you at now, and who are you coaching for? So my name is Jan Rosenberg. Uh, I'm originally from New Jersey. Uh, was a two time New Jersey State place winner. Uh, wrestled initially at Rutgers. Um, Transferred to Co College in 2014, was a NCAA All American, and now I'm an assistant coach at Co College. Love it, man. Co College is like near and dear to my heart. Love those guys. Who, what's the coaching staff at Co right now? We got a really good staff. So it's head coach John Osendorf, who legendary wrestler for Dan Gable. Uh, head assistant is Jimmy Gatto. Uh, I'm on staff. Topher Carton, who wrestled at the University of Iowa, helps out. We have Cole Erickson. Uh, national champ Josh Gerke, and then just some other alumni come in and help through. But we got some really, really high level guys in the room. Coach O is the man. He oh, is just, uh, dude, one of the coolest dudes ever. Great leader. And what I love about Co is the culture that goes on at Cole at Co. Absolutely. So for me specifically, you know, I wasn't in the best place when I initially got to Co. Uh, just the mentorship I had underneath Coach O and some of the older guys back then, like Jimmy Gatto and Ethan Ball, Dimitri Boyer, Bo Westfall. We had some hammers when I first came into the room. Those guys kind of really took me underneath their wing, and it's a really big family environment. And you just learn the Gable mentality wrestling under O. Uh, kind of brought me back to that passion of wrestling that I was kind of missing. Um, and yeah, yeah, everybody there. It's one of the only programs, especially Division Three, where you have eight, seven, eight, nine, ten guys that are in the room coaching-wise helping. And that's just because of Owen, the culture he's built, 
and the environment of the room and family environment of the entire school. So it's a really special place if people have never been there or heard of it. It's an incredible environment to be in. Yeah, located in beautiful Cedar Rapids, Iowa. New wrestling room. It's unbelievable. So why did you end up transferring out of Rutgers to Co in the first place? Yeah, you know, so it's kind of a, a great way to look at it nowadays. If you would have asked me in 2013 when I left, it would have been, you know, you blame the coaches or you blame everything but yourself. But, you know, looking back on it, you know, I just don't think I uh, mentally prepared myself for what uh, I needed to do to be successful in that environment. You know, I preach to my guys nowadays the same things that Coach Pollard and Coach Godell preached to me when I was at Rutgers. And, you know, maybe if I followed what some of those guys said, things would have been a little different. You know, you really have to keep your academics, your athletics and social life kind of in a line. So, you know, I'd be lying to you if I said every day I was in that room that I was doing everything I was supposed to be doing to, to become a national champ. Um, now, obviously, it's great for my guys because I can preach to them like, Hey, you do, these are the things you need to do. Like I know what it takes now being a D3 all American, but I also know what paths you can take if you don't want to succeed. So mm -hmm. um, that's kind of where it came down to. I just started to kind of decline my passion for it uh, because of me not giving my full efforts were kind of just declining and uh, I needed to make a change. Initially I wasn't even going to continue to wrestle. Um, one of our coaches in New Jersey, he was my club coach, his name's Sean Hall. He was a co-college alumni, All-American in the 1980s, kind of brought me into his club. Uh, I was helping out youth practices and kind of brought my spark to, to kind of get back into it. So he took me out to Iowa. We went to Wartburg and Co. And once I met Coach O, there was no way I wasn't going to wrestle for a guy like him. You know, he was the, the realest coach I ever sat down with during an a interview and to, to kind of wrestle for his program. Um, yeah, I was going to ask you how you ended up at Co. So you, so you, you go to Rutgers. That doesn't work out. So is this like first semester, and now you're coaching second semester? Or is there a year or two in between? No. So um, I went to Co. The school started in August, like twenty something, and I visited Co. Like August first. So like really yeah. late into the summer after I transferred, I hadn't even been on the mat for a few months. It felt like. You know, I wasn't going to be in the, in the records room, even though I'm sure they would have welcomed me. If I wanted to come back, they would have, they would have let me wrestle. I mean, those guys are great too. So Scott yeah, Goodell's August, great, man. He's a nice, he's yeah. an awesome guy. Coach Pollard and coach Goodell. Coach Pollard really took me under his wing from early on of my junior year when he was running SKWC. Um, I can't say enough good things about coach Pollard and, and that whole staff that I was a part of there. Um, so if you had to look back on that part of your life, though, bef before we get to Co, and you say, because you talk to a lot of recruits now and everyone in wrestling knows everyone, you know, when you're a kid, your goal is to go, your goal is to go D1 and you don't really know why you want to go D1, but that's kind of the move. And so if you look at why it didn't work for you at Rutgers, would you say that you just, you know, socially got distracted or, you know, weren't fully committed to the D1 commitment because it's like a, it's a full-time job. Um, or was it just a, a combination of many things? Yeah. So I would say like, you know, I was, uh, I placed at Fargo multiple times. I placed at flow nationals, you know, I had beaten guys like Nick Piccanini and I had wins over some really high level guys that were also going D one. Um, I placed twice in the New Jersey state tournament. So in my mind, like, Oh yeah, I'm going to wrestle division one for sure. Mm -hmm. And you're not used to losing and taking up lumps in the room as much. So I, I think that, initially was really hard for me and I'd never really responded well. And I didn't, like I said, I don't think I fully committed to the point where I was going to succeed in the D one environment at that time. Now, if you take my mindset now that I've learned through coach O and them, yeah, maybe if it, you put me back in that time frame with the mind I have now, yeah, I could have succeeded. But at that time, yeah, I was distracted. You know, there was a lot of, like, you felt like you're the, the big D one guy and, you feel like you can do anything you want to do. And that's not always the way to succeed. I think it's a combination of just distraction and uh, not buying into a program, you know, yeah. and that's super important. And I, I think what guys need to realize when you're going to rust division one, yes, it's great to build extreme late relationships with your coaches, but you also have to remember for those guys, it's a business. So you need to, you need to do what they're telling you to do and buy in. If you want to succeed, those guys know what they're doing, whether you think they do, or you're, if you don't think they are, then, you're kind of foolish as an 18 year old kid, those coaches, they know what it takes to succeed. So you should buy into what they're telling you to do. And I don't think I did that initially. And I it's funny, I had this 
conversation too with uh, Coach Cody on Pollard at U23s, and we just kind of giggled about it because he's like, yeah, you're a totally different guy now. You're way grown up. But I was like, yeah, it, nothing against you guys. It's, it was kind of on me. So Right. Well, I think you nailed it, though. Like, if you don't buy in, and I'm thinking back to two moments in my life, once in college and then once at a, a startup where I was in sales, you know, when it doesn't go your way right away and it's like it's pretty bumpy and, and you're really doubting yourself, you can either double down, which is what you're supposed to do, or start blaming things. And it's so easy not to buy into that culture and kind of be like an outsider and, you know, like talking to yourself about how uh, this this program sucks or this this manager sucks. So it's, you know, everyone has to go through that. And a lot of people don't have the courage to go back and wrestle again. And so you get to co you're around all these great guys. The guys are just doing the right thing. And some of those wrestlers you mentioned were around when my brother was there. Those guys are like just studs, man. Ethan Ball, one of my best friends, Demetri Boyer. All those dudes are quality wrestlers, but also just quality people. And so you wrestle at Co. How did you decide to stay at Co. after you had All-American and graduated? Oh, it was a simple decision. I think just the uh, fact that Coach O is taking me where I – I mean – he took me from a guy that was like a kid that couldn't do maybe all the right things to a guy that could succeed in the work environment and succeed anywhere else outside of the wrestling room. And he's just a mentor that like, there's no way I don't want to be a part of him, whether he is part of my other work life. Like I'm a nurse at the university of Iowa, but any mindset things he's teaching me and leadership things he's teaching me is applicable to my nursing career. So it was an absolutely no brainer for me to stay with him once he asked me to stay um, I didn't actually coach at Co initially. Um, I was at Cornell for my first year, but once Coach O offered the opportunity to come back, it was a no-brainer. I would have wow. done anything to get back on the staff with him. Um, I think it was just from day one. Um, we went to Co, like I said, in August, and Coach O sat me down and with my dad, and my dad asked him, like, hey, what do you think the opportunity for my son to start for your program is? And you know, every coach you think they're going to think, oh, your son's going to be an All-American. He's going to be an after. No, Coach O was like, I don't know if your son's going to start. He hasn't wrestled in four months. If he thinks he's just going to walk into here and be a hammer and start for me, you're thinking twice. You need to put the work in. And once I heard him say that, I'm like, this is the guy I'm wrestling for. I didn't need to go to any other schools after that because he was real. Like, it felt like a coach that was real. Like, he didn't feel like he was just there to – give you whatever it takes to get you into this program. He, you could tell from right then that's the mentor I needed to get me back onto the path to succeed. So I have yeah. respect from him from the first day I met him until now. So yeah, that's exactly how I know him as well. So I'm getting excited. Just chills hearing you talk about that. Cause he's, he's that kind of guy and he's, he's legit and you know, wrestling in uh, division three in Iowa is awesome because the Iowa conference is so strong and a lot of those dual meets, you know, like Co Warburg or um, like Loris, when they come down, those are big dual meets. And like the whole school cares about it. And it's such a fun environment to be in that Iowa conference for Division three. And, you know, it doesn't ha you can be, you know, I got friends at lacrosse, friends at North Central. But, man, when you're in, you know, in that Iowa conference for D3, it's so much fun. And there's so many good kids that are in that environment. Um, when did Co stand up the new wrestling room? So we got that the year after I graduated. So it'd be the first season of 2017, 2018. And it is comparable to any big 10 wrestling room in the country. We have one of the nicest facilities, I would say, not being biased in the <laughs> country. It's, it's one of the nicest facilities for just our wrestlers. I mean, to find a division three facility with three wrestling mats, a locker room just dedicated for wrestling, cold tubs, and a huge weight room is you're not going to find that in too many division three facilities. It's incredible. And it's only for the wrestlers the stand alone. That's the, the wrestling part. Yeah. We share wow. the weight room, but the wrestling yeah. room with the cold tub locker room that is dedicated just to wrestling. And it is incredible. It's awesome. Cause the old room was right off from the gym and it was like cool in the inside, but it was like, you know, smaller and it was pretty gritty, but yeah, I've, I've never actually been in the new one and I need to get out there, but, yeah, it looks phenomenal from the pictures. And it just shows you like the support at Co for athletics is strong. And uh, it's just it's just awesome to know you're out there and you know, shout out to to Topher, the guy I used to coach and you just love that whole program. God, those are great people. So you're out there, you're working as a nurse, saving lives, you're coaching kids, changing lives. 
And this summer you get a invitation to go out to the OTC. What, how did that all come about? So yeah, uh, growing up, uh, around my area and James green, who's the new developmental coach for U20 U17 was a close friend of mine growing up. We traveled a lot together to like junior duels, Virginia beach, Fargo. So I came pretty close with James in that, uh, environment. Once I saw he got the job, obviously I was extremely happy for him. He's a great dude with a crazy story himself. Mm -hmm. Um, saw him at U 23s. We talked for a while. We just kind of like, it felt like old times. And he said, Hey, if you ever, uh, want to come out to OTC and work out, we have tons of light guys that are U 20, U 17 that could really benefit from a college like workout partner. And that's where I'm really grateful that I work in at Iowa because the University of Iowa is extremely proud of wrestling, and that includes the hospital, that includes the employees. Uh, so when you get an invitation from James Green and you have two jobs, you kind of have to think, uh, well, am I going to be able to do this? And I walked into my manager's office and said, hey, I have this opportunity to go to the Olympic Training Center, and I'm never going to get the opportunity if I don't go. They're all wrestling fans, so they're like, yeah, we'll make it work for you. We'll figure it out for you. So that was great. Really uh, happy to be able to do that. But yeah, so I'm I and went the fact out that you went because like people say that like, yeah, come on out. Like, yeah, man, I'll be out this summer. And like l- most people don't go like the amount of times I've said that and I don't actually go see a club. And it pains me to say that, but it's just, you know, life gets in the way. So you get back from the U23s and you're serious about this. Yeah, I was dead serious. I will do anything for my guys at Co or wherever to help improve their wrestling. So that means I need to go out and find guys that are better than me find coaches that are better than me, high school guys. It doesn't matter what age group they are. And I got to find a way to pick my brain and pick their brain so I can grow and get better. Uh, That's the only way we're going to continue to grow at Co. And wherever I, if I ever coach anywhere else in the future, that's going to be the only place way I can, I can grow as a coach. So yeah, I was serious that I wanted to go out there and learn from some of the best high school guys and best college guys in the country and see what they're doing that I can bring back to my room to get Mm -hmm. myself better as well. Because right now, I mean, we're happy we took top five in the country, but we want to win. So if we want to win, it comes from the top down, right? So all of us need to get better. It's easy for us to just say, oh, hey, our wrestling guy's not wrestling enough. Like he needs to get better. He needs to get in the weight room. But Coach, I will tell you, it starts from the top and it trickles its way down. So if we get better as coaches and we learn different techniques and different drills and different mindset techniques to help our guys to win, then that's what we need to do. So I'm willing to travel anywhere in the world to, to get my guys better. It doesn't matter yeah. if I can get the opportunity, I'll take it, especially as a D3 guy. There's well, no opportunities really to get out to the OTC. So using that, I will I'll I was not going to miss that opportunity. I love it, man. And it's hard. I have talked to a lot of coaches on here, and it's easy to track your progress as a wrestler. It's hard to track your progress as a coach because sometimes you get caught up in what they're doing and you're not developing your own skills. And so you get out there. How long are you out there for? So I stayed from the 15th to the 19th and then flew right to Fargo. So. Awesome, man. So what, so when you were out there, were the, like the junior teams, the U 17, the U 20 teams, are they getting ready for the worlds and they're at like a camp? Yeah. So it was essentially like their camp, their final camp for the U 17 guys and the first camp for the U 20 guys uh, to get ready for Rome and Bulgaria and then senior Greco was there. And then the resident senior freestyle athletes like Jaden Cox was there. You had like Michaela Beck and Jakara Winchester were there. Nice. Um, and then all the senior Greco guys. So I had the opportunity to roll with Michaela Beck and just kind of pick her brain since she worked under Mark Perry. Uh, Jakara was showing some stuff to us as well. Um, and then I watched all of obviously the senior Greco stuff and watched a, and wrestled in a lot of the U17, U20 practices. Bro, who are the who are some of the young freaks up in the U seventeen U twenty team, Dude, man? There were so many hammers in there. You had like Luke Lillendahl was there, Castillo was there, Dom who won a world title at forty five kilos was there. Um, then you was had Larkin like, there. Yeah, Larkin was there, and his dad. There, love the people. Larkin family, bro. Yeah. And just watching him roll around, Larkin, he has some really really cool tools as well. And then there were some upper guys like Keeter was there, Braden Thompson was there. So there was. And then you had Bergie and his brother was there. So you got to see what Kale's was showing them. Was Kale out there? Oh, Kale wasn't there, but I mean, it's just to see what they're trickling down. Yeah. So Lilladal is, yeah, I I don't know much about him, but I, I follow, uh, 
you know, Bo Bassett, everyone knows that listens to this show, you know, defending world champ, little doll takes him out. And uh, so is little doll now a two time world champ. So I think he was a world silver medalist and then a world champ world this champ year. this year. And Man, his, his dad was out there. He is one of the nicest dudes I ever met. He is a great guy. It's wow. no uh, surprise why his son is as good as he is. His dad is, is willing to do whatever it takes to help him get there. And that's just a really good family as well. Yeah, no, it's a, I got to follow that that scene a little bit closer. This year I was this summer. I was way removed from it. Last summer I watched a fair amount of the matches, but man, it's just so cool to see how good these guys are now. And just they throw it out there, man. They're so excited to go to the worlds and represent the U.S. So it, it, people talk about it. But, you know, in the in the 2000s, I graduated high school in 07. I don't really remember teams going to that. And it wasn't like a big thing. No, so I remember uh, growing up, we, we took it serious. Like, we had Mark Ray and McKenna, like, all of us trained together for freestyle in high school area. We went to, like, feel of cadets, but I don't really remember too much emphasis on trying to make a world, like, a junior world team or cadet world team. But going up. past that, yeah, no. Yeah, it was mostly, like, you win feel of cadets, and then you go and you try to double up at Fargo, and that was kind of, like, your summer. Dude, McKenna was a just a killer as a youth. He still is, but man, I remember coaching against him at Fargo once, and I was like, "Ooh, guy's scary." Yeah. If you let him on top back in high school, you were getting tacked for sure. Crazy. So you, then you go out to Fargo, and there were some awesome brackets. I think it was like Cadet 120 was just insane. Right. What were your takeaways from Fargo? Dude, Fargo was incredible. I mean, I'm just thankful that Team New Jersey offered the opportunity for me to come out there. Uh, the director there, Pete DiBiase, is a great guy, and he understands the importance for us at CODA to develop and recruit guys from the East Coast as well, mm -hmm. just to get different looks for our like program. We want to recruit from everywhere. Oh man, Fargo though, it's like you said, it's incredible the level of talent from these high school kids nowadays. Yeah. Um, there are some kids that just let it fly, like you said, 120 with Blaze and Knox and Sam Herring and Bo Bassett, like. That's an incredible bracket. And there's so many other guys I'm sure I missed that I don't really follow as closely. But And that's what pains me about it. Like you look at the brackets, you're like, man, it's like a hundred person bracket, but like I don't know anyone to follow. So like you got to sit next to like a Willie Sailor or some of these guys that really know, like Corby knows these guys. Like some of these yeah. analysts are like high school experts. And it'd be so fun to go to Fargo and just have them sit next to you so you could know what's going on throughout the tournament, you know? Sure. Corby, like you said, man, he is a wizard. When I was in high school, he had just moved into New Jersey and he saw that I was ranked in the country and he drove from wherever he was living to our like holiday youth tournament to watch me wrestle. Came met me and my dad. It was like 2012 when I met Corby. Bro, he's Incredible. one of those guys you see him around and you're like, is your kid here? Do you have any kids? Like, no, he's just a fan. He just, he's everywhere. Yeah, he's he everything about wrestling. Next thing I know, he's commentating on the stalemate show with me. And then he's like everywhere. I mean, he, that's that's the guy you want on the mic who actually knows these guys and he is fantastic um bro so you i didn't know you went out there at team new jersey yeah. you know jersey loves its wrestling just like oh. illinois loves its wrestling jersey's got one division in high school right yep one division we're never gonna get rid of it either how savage is the middle school state tournament it's crazy because all these kids that are wrestling for like bergen catholic or they want to go to pope john or del barton or even some of these local schools like south plainfield and uh, you have Camden Catholic and you have Boundbrook and all these like rich historic programs like High Point. And yeah, these kids take it serious. They want to get really good so that when they get to high school, like they want to be at Boardwalk Hall in that one division state tournament. Like it's and hard to qualify for that tournament being one division. So I bet now in eighth grade, is there just one main state tournament like for the middle school kids? Yeah. It's one division, eighth grade for everybody. There's no like sections or nope. It's you qualify. So it's just like kind of like the high school state tournament. They have eight different qualifiers. The top three of each go and they have a 24 man bracket at the eighth grade state tournament. It's pretty. And it's just one round to qualify. It's not like regionals and sectionals in state. No, it's one round. Like you have to place top three at one of the qualifiers that are there i think if you don't place top three you can go to a different qualifier but it's just top three at all of them and there's eight of them i believe and what are those tournaments called like the section or yeah they just call them like i think they just call them like state qualifiers they, they change the locations every year so got it and so are you do you see a lot of like the catholic school first of all the catholic schools and the public schools are in the same division in high school same division right? all right Except so do Blair, they only one out so right right and that's a that's a whole nother beast but um 
do you see a lot of the Catholic high schools going to that state tournament and recruiting kids to go to their school, like the top eighth graders? So, I mean, that's the thing. I think like what kids don't understand, and that's why I have a lot of respect for Dave Bell and Stoll, who coached at Del Barton and Coach Bell coached at Burton Catholic. Like some of these public school coaches, they're in there from January to March only or whatever the season is for high school. And then they're not with their guys at all, which throughout the rest of the year. Like you see Coach Bell and you see Stoll, you see them at summer tournaments, you see Coach Bell going to Fargo. Like it's no surprise that these kids want to wrestle for these coaches. One, their programs are great, but two, they're they're putting themselves out there. They're doing things that public school coaches aren't willing to do. Mm-hmm. So that's why I kind of get upset when I see the people complain public versus private. I'm like, hey, if you want your public school to be good, go out there and show your guys why you should, they, you should keep them or why they want to wrestle for you. Oh, I couldn't agree more, man. I hate when people not, complain about that. Yeah, if you're not going out there in the summer and and Dom Santoli and Coach Bell are going out to Fargo, like, why are you complaining that guys want to wrestle for Bergen Catholic? Like, clearly those kids and those coaches, they want their guys to be good. They're going to send their guys to Fargo, and they want to make sure that they're there supporting their guys. I mean, to me, that's important. you got to put your face out there if you want guys to wrestle for you. So do you have to move in the district to go to a private school, or can you live anywhere and go? You can live anywhere and go to a private school in New Jersey. Um, public, I think some schools have open enrollment, but mostly it's like school districts. Right, right, right. Okay. So it's, and then what are like the, like the big teams that are, that are good out there? You mentioned Del Barton. So your top, your top schools are probably, you got like Bergen Catholic, Del Barton, South Plainfield, who's a public school. That's where Anthony National wrestled. They're pretty good. Um, Camden Catholic down in South Jersey's pretty talented. Where did Soriano go? Bergen Catholic. Oh shit. Okay. So high okay. point is crazy. They had four or five state champs in one year, one in probably like mid two thousands. And that's a public school. It's a very small public school. That's like Nick Frankavilla was a multiple time state champ. Drew Wagenhofer was a national finalist at Warburg. And then they had guys like Ethan Orr and Billy Smith wrestler at Ruckert's. That was a really great program. So that's high point. Now, were there only one four-time state champ, Ashnault, or was no, or Suriano a four-timer, so too? Suriano. The first was actually Mike Gray, coach of Cornell. Who? Who? We and love then, Mike Gray. Yeah, he's a man. They're actually from my hometown. So Really? Great. Yeah. So we he went them. to Del Bar, and he was – how did I forget that, of course? He was the first four-timer. That's right. First, first four-timer. And then the second one was Camp Latano, who didn't really wrestle too much in college. He wrestled at Ohio State and Rutgers, I believe. And then it was Ashnault and Suriano. Those are the four. Has anyone gone undefeated and won it? Um, I think Mike Ray was undefeated. No, maybe not. Uh, I think I think Ashland was undefeated, right? I don't know. Like I, uh, I, I love hearing about it because I don't know that much about it. I think Ashland was an undefeated state champ. It's crazy because in Illinois, we used to have two divisions, and then in 2009, we went to three divisions. And so there's – but there's still only been one undefeated four-time state champ ever, and it's Josh Albert. And in his senior year, he wrestled Jared Cortez, who was another four timer at, at this holiday tournament. And the videos on YouTube and it was just shenanigans, a crazy yeah, match. Like Dvorak, right? Yeah, Dvorak. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But like all the dudes have come through Illinois, Joe Williams, you know, all these legends. And there's only been one that's gone through undefeated. And it's like a lot of it was like an illegal slam here or there. But I didn't know if. uh I remember hearing stories about Soriano, like the dude never lost, like just dude, insane. Dude, the beast. Yeah. And it's crazy. Like Ashnault, like my sophomore year, the first time I made it to the state tournament, my bracket was like Ashnault, Tyler Fraley, who's a Fargo champ. Chad Walsh was in my bracket who wrestled, who's an all American at Ryder. He's now a coach at Columbia. There was tons of like just hammers throughout the entire bracket guys that were placing at Fargo. Like, just to qualify for Fargo, I'm sure it's the same for Team Illinois back then. It was hard. Like, oh, yeah. Just a Fargo team because you had 100%. all these guys that are in your state bracket. Yeah, go- Freestyle State in Illinois is a two-day tournament across like 18 mats. And to get down to the final day, you know, only I think it's top three go. And then you can do like a last chance and then Northern Plains. But, yeah, no, it's awesome. I mean, you look at this year, though, I can't get over – team Siebel and what they did at, uh, at Fargo. That is insane. That's and, incredible. and I did not know until after Fargo that Dylan Carew, someone I used to wrestle with, he has a club too going on right now. What's that one called? That's called big game. Where are they out of? Um, actually close to Iowa city. I think it's North Liberty. Oh, that's such an Iowa name for a club, big game hunting. You know, like all those guys are just, they're country boys. I love them for, but 
dude, I I mean, the first I heard of Dan Knight going across the entire state of Iowa, Dan Knight, one of the great coaches, probably in high school of, of anyone, one of the great wrestlers of all time in Iowa. He's driving three hours to West Iowa to go to the Seabolt Club. And I was like, what is going on out there? Then now they're like, you know, they're nationally known. They basically, I think Seabolt had like nine Fargo champs. I mean, I don't know exactly, but it's an unbelievable club they have going on out there. And so that's just, it's exciting right now. You're in Iowa. That's what's going on around you. And you're probably getting some tailwind of all these different clubs right now. Absolutely. I mean, you got Topher Carton Russ from, uh, doing Eastern Iowa. You have Coach Carew doing big game. And you have Siebel running out of Iowa City and Jefferson, Iowa. Oh, he's I- out of Iowa City now. Yeah, they have a at Hawkeye uh, at the Hawkeye wrestling room. They do two days a week. It looks like there. Oh, wow. Tom so, and I mean, Terry are looking their chops, man. All those kids coming in there for a uh, school in Eastern Iowa. It's for us. It's like, how can you not be excited? you got three really good clubs and really good coaches all around. And it's no yeah. surprise. Now our freshmen are more uh, dialed in and they're all tough and they like to wrestle hard and th- their technique is good because look at the coaches they're coming from. Yeah, exactly. And then you will- from all those clubs, which they're all hammers like Bryce Park, who was a freshman last year, round of 12 was a Seabolt guy, mm-hmm. tough as nails. And then we have some freshmen coming in this year that were at big game and when I mean, we're not with them yet, but it's going to be exciting to see those guys fly around. And you got guys that were mentored under Topher and you already know Topher is one of the best coaches in the area. If people no question. Know, know that he is one of the best technicians I've ever been around. So um that that yeah, was a legendary yeah. high school career Topher got fifth and eighth grade and he went on to be a two-time undefeated illinois state champ and then i believe he was undefeated his junior year i can't remember when he lost to Sorensen, uh but one of the years but maybe like you know he lost to logan ryan once but man very few losses and uh just an unbelievable turnaround one of the strongest minds in strike mo- like i don't even know if i believe he was going to win it as a freshman it was pretty crazy to see that and so Man, it's exciting in Iowa right now. It's it's the first week of college football, which means wrestling is so close. And I just can't wait for this season, man. Now, does Co does Co wrestle Wartburg home or away this year? Oh, we're at Co this year, so we went Let's to Wartburg, go. which is an incredible environment too. Like you said, that passion of going down to wrestle Wartburg, wrestling Loris, or going to like we wrestle lacrosse in North Central. Like we make sure our schedule is as tough for D three as possible. Yeah. Uh, and where are the national duels at usually? They're in uh, Louisville, Kentucky. So okay. nice, it's a good nice. central location. It brings all the East Coast teams in that we don't get to see as often. And it's just that's a great environment. We pride ourselves of making ourselves ready for that tournament. We it's really a great want to tournament. I can't wait till D1 does it again if they ever will. It's so and it was cool how they used to do it where all three all the divisions were at one place. That was sweet. Yeah. Um and, and the other thing about D3 that's crazy is the qualifier that you guys are in is ludicrous. Yeah. Is that not think, right? Like the, like too tough almost. I think it's the, the system in place is difficult. I mean, we know what we sign up for. We tell our guys like, Hey, this is what you signed up for. So we're not going to complain about it. But right. the fact that they don't have allocations when there's five teams in the top 10 in the country in our regional top six, 10, like whatever, like it's not weighted year. by how good the teams are. It's just- so it's us and Wartburg and Loris and North Central and Milliken has good guys and Dubuque has a few good guys. And then you got Luther who's tough and yeah, it's a loaded, loaded regional. And we know every year that if we get out of our regional, we're going to have a really good tournament at the NCAA tournament. Yep. Uh, my senior year, I think we did 28 out of 30 qualifiers were all Americans, which that's crazy. Pretty damn, as good as you're going to get essentially. And the, the crazy thing about how tough Iowa is with D3 wrestling is out of the schools you mentioned, you also got Simpson, who's got Dylan Peters and Jeff McGinnis. You also got Cornell. Is McDonough still at Cornell? Yeah, you have Cornell with McDonough and Coach Ham, and they're going to get better. Obviously, like you said, with McGinnis and Dylan Peters, you know Simpson's going to start getting better. And then yeah. Ozarks had Leroy Gardner, and they're getting better. And every single school in our regional is getting better. And it's no longer like, Oh, there's about four good teams. No, last year there was like North Central took second in the country. Warburg won. We were a top five team. Loris is always a top five team. Yeah. And like you said, you got tough dudes at Cornell that are coming on. Ozarks now is bringing really tough kids. And I don't know Ozarks. Where are they out of? 
So they're out of Arkansas. Uh, oh shit! They're in your conference. They're, they're not in our conference, but they're in our regional. So okay. Same thing with like North Central College, who's out of Naperville. They're in our regional. They're not in our conference, but Got they've put together like 19 teams in the area to make it a regional tournament, and it's only top three. Oh so my like, god! They don't. The NCAA hasn't really tracked. So, like I said, the one year we had 28 All Americans, another region only had five All Americans in their entire regional. It's like, Jeez. all right, at what point are we going to start weighing it so that we're getting the right guys to the national tournament? Because right now, essentially, we pride ourselves in getting ready for that tournament, but it almost it makes it seem your body of work means nothing because if you don't qualify in that day, you're not going. Yeah. I mean, and it used to just be like each conference with its own qualifier. And then when you combine all the Illinois D3 programs, you know, now historically they haven't been that good, but now, like you said, North Central right outside Chicago is a power and, you know, there's a lot of talent in Illinois. And so th that's exciting. And then I Arkansas, like how the heck is that in the same qualifier? It's crazy. Yeah. And their coach is good. Like he just left. He's the assistant coach now at Purdue, but L Leroy Gardner was the head coach there and they were yeah. getting graining steam really fast they were getting better and better every year wow. so yeah and then like you said cornell is going to be good they have happel and mcdonough and ham and they're going to be trying to to build a team to beat us as well so yeah every mm -hmm. team is tough in our area yeah and then you know outside of that conference outside of that qualifier all the minnesota schools are solid you know yep. lacrosse is always good so man i i just I, I talk about it all the time i feel like a broken record but yeah, I just want people to know how exciting Division Three wrestling is, and how much culture there is in it, and how much like team camaraderie there is, and it's just an awesome environment. And I I wish more people knew about it. I think it's big in the Midwest. I don't know how big it is on the coast, but you know, I grew up knowing about D three programs, but a lot of guys don't even know about it until you know they're in high school and they're kind of fretting. So I think it's just an awesome thing to to spread the word about how how fun the D three wrestling community is and how tough it is. Yeah, I think there's a misconception that like D3 wrestling or across the land isn't tough. But I mean, if I challenge guys that are in high school to come to watch a practice of ours and see right. like Coach O treats our program just like a Division One program. He wrestled for Dan Gable. He doesn't know anything different than that D1 Gable mentality. Yep. And that's the way we run our program. It's no different. We hold our guys to the same standard as any D1 program would in the country. We, we love wrestling D1 competition. We don't shy away from it. We go to the opens to see some of these D1 guys. We would probably wrestle D1 teams in duels if, if teams wanted to. Um, right. Yeah, it's, it's, we take it serious. And I think that's not just our program. Like Augsburg does the same thing and Wartburg does the same thing. And so does lacrosse and North Central. And then you have like the College of New Jersey and Stevens. Like they take, they take it just as serious. Yeah. And I know there's a lot of other programs I miss and that take it just as serious. And it's, it's a tough, tough environment. If you think you're going to be a D1 guy just to come in and destroy the field, like people are mistaken quickly. There's been and there's a lot of schools too. Like there's division two. I don't want to shy away from them. They're, they're doing great things and you can get scholarships there, but there's only like 45, 50 schools. There's quite a few division three programs. Yeah. I think there's way over a hundred programs for division three. Yeah. Well, which is only get 18 qualifiers. Oh, wow. Crazy, man. That's crazy. Jane, it's been great to have you on the podcast, man. We always sign off with this question, you know, how has wrestling changed your life? You know, what, what's been the biggest impact for you through the sport? I, I think wrestling has just made me into the person I am today. It's taught me like hard work and uh, dedication and not shying away from goals. Um, because of wrestling and the mindset it's brought me, I'm able to become the best nurse I can be and not just wrestler. And that's something I think is really important. And uh, it taught me to shine in times where there's adversity and overcome my fears. And without wrestling, I wouldn't be anywhere near I am today. So I'm super thankful for the sport. And it like shows you, like puts you in those little incubators of like pain and suffering. So that like later in life, like when you're like 35 and you have like an actual tragedy, you know, you've been through some really tough stuff going through Rutgers, going through that. I'm sure there's some disappointments and then kind of rebounding back up. So, you know, it's possible. Absolutely. And it's helped me accomplish goals. Like uh, I just see my mindset in, in the field of nursing and coaching and it's different than everybody else. Like people at work can tell I was a wrestler, you know, you get that adversity that you've accomplished your entire life. You've always faced things that people don't face and it helps you flip into that tunnel vision of time of need. So without wrestling, I wouldn't be half the nurse I am today and it wouldn't be half the coach I am today and half the person I am. So 
I'm super thankful for the sport and all the mentors and coaches and people that I've had helped me along the way. So I love it, man. Well, I'm grateful you've been able to come on the podcast this morning. Thank you so much for your time. And I hope to make it out for that Wartburg duel. That'd be a lot of fun. Absolutely. You need to come out or come to one of our uh, Iowa tailgates. You yes. Out, so. We're going to the Iowa. I know we're going to the Iowa Wisconsin game at Iowa city. So we'll have to plan oh. something for that. Yeah. We'll have to, we'll have to see you then. So. Absolutely. Give Coach O my best, man, and Jimmy Gatto. I love those guys. Absolutely. It was an honor. Thank you so much for having me on. I'm a, Thanks, I'm brother. a huge fan. So. No problem, man. Happy to have you on. We'll see you this winter. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this episode of Wrestling Changed My Life with Jan Rosenberg. We're proudly presented by Spartan Combat. Go to spartancombat.com to place your custom team apparel over if you haven't done so already, please go to Instagram and follow Wrestling Change My Life. We post video clips from each of our interviews where you can find which you can find at Wrestling Change My Life on Instagram. We'll see you next time. 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 We'll see you next time.